A little over a year ago, back before I started on Stompbot 2 and back when Blastwave 2 was still in the CAD stage, I started working on a new combat robot. The name came first, Thwackintosh, a clean styled Thwackbot for the 150 gram fairy weight class. Now, there were a lot of problems that popped up in development, but it's finally done. I'm Caden here with Kepler Electronics, and let's get into it. First off, I should probably clarify what a Thwackbot actually is. It's a type of hammer bot that uses two wheels and a hammer mounted rigidly to the body. Using the torque of the motors, it swings the arm over to hit opponents. Some thwack bots also can spin in place, but these are built much less frequently these days. So I chose to build this thwack bot. So I started in Fusion with a CAD model and a relatively simple one at that. The chassis is a single part with a lid on top with the N20 gear motors face mounting in place on the sides. The Fingertech power switch screws into place in the corner down here, as always to comply with the safety rules. The lid is held on with screws, but instead of simply threading into plastic like the first blast wave, they thread into brass inserts. These inserts are added by simply taking a soldering iron and pushing them into the holes, the heat helping to melt the plastic around the edges. The same technique is used for the impactor, which are simply these beefy screws on the end of this printed arm. The arm itself attaches to the chassis with two 3 mil screws and some nuts. I'm mixing screw types here because I had a few lying around, but I'll probably change it to be all Imperial eventually. I could use lock nuts, but I also had these nuts lying around, and it seems to hold pretty well. If this ends up being a bad idea, thread locker is always an option. My original plan was to unpack the battery and flatten it out like this, but I decided that, that was a bit risky because I didn't want to blow the battery up accidentally. So I decided to move the motors to the edge of the chassis to accommodate the stock battery. However, this caused a new problem, as the lid screws now poked out in front of the 2.75 inch wheels. Since these were the largest size offered, I had to take things into my own hands and make my own. At Kilobots, one of the teams closest to my pit was Malobots, home of Billy and Tubi, both of which share a similar design with Thwackintosh. Aside from both going super far in the bracket, they also use custom wheels made from foam tiles, albeit a thicker variant. When I realized that I needed to make some custom wheels, I remembered these bots and decided to give it a shot. I even had the materials already, way, way too many field tiles for my basement vex field, which happened to be the same thickness as the wheels in question. So I bought a cheap hole saw with a diameter of 3 inches and started cutting. The first few were pretty rough, but after propping it up on a cardboard box, I was able to cut out a lot of wheels from a single tile. However, these were not quite circular and also had a lot of burrs on the edges, so I had to clean things up. I threw the wheel hub into my drill and hit it with a sanding block to smooth out the edges. After taking time to make sure that the wheels were the exact same size, I was able to simply put the hub and wheel onto the bot. Now in terms of electronics, I ended up going with the Malenki Nano ESC to drive the motors. The neat thing about this speed controller is that it's got a built-in receiver, cutting down on the amount of soldering and space taken up. This one is also cheaper than the competition, even when taking shipping from the UK into account. One thing is, is that it runs off the AFHDS 2A protocol, which I thought this radio that I'd mistakenly bought for Blastwave used. It did not, so I had to buy another radio, and that's the story of how I ended up with four radios. On the plus side, this radio is relatively nice, and it also uses half the number of double A's as the previous Flysky radio. The only other part of the electronics is the required power LED. I simply soldered the positive side of the power input on the board and the other side of the power switch. It's a little messy, but without the receiver pins to use like on Stompbot, this was the best option. It was at this point that I was finally able to fire up the bot and see that it didn't drive straight but instead simply moved in circles. After swapping motors a few times and even ESCs, I realized that somehow, through multiple motor orders from different vendors, I ended up with no sets that matched each other's voltage. Each gearbox had a slightly different amount of resistance, resulting in different speeds at the same voltage. Even adding a ton of grease didn't change things. So I made another order of motors, which worked. It actually took about three months of on and off work to figure this problem out, so if you end up with the same strange issue that just isn't getting fixed and it seems like your robot might be cursed, try taking a look at each individual component and also ask on the forums because that really helped me. It still veers to one side, but at least it isn't a surprise melty brain anymore. It also has some nice power to it, I mean just look at this nice dent it put in the fridge while it was spinning out of control. With everything assembled it comes out to 102 grams. 48 under the weight limit. I'm really not quite sure what I'll do with all the extra weight. I could add some super thin titanium or spring steel for extra armor, or I could just buy another hole saw and add even bigger wheels to stay way above the competition. It's so underweight in fact that I could probably almost trim weight to get it to the 75 gram flea weight class, but as far as I know there aren't really any competitions for that class in the US. 
Another part of me wants to try and build a mini bot because that is definitely a super dumb idea, but who knows? I'm not really sure, but thanks to the current state of competitions, I have some time to figure it out. Well, this project has been quite the adventure, I'm very glad it's over. I spent so long debugging the spinning issue that I was quite ready to give up and move on. I'd actually told myself that if the last batch of motors hadn't worked, I would have just given up and redesigned it as an ant or beetle. Mostly to keep the name, because I think it's awesome. Thanks for making it this far. If you're listening to this, it must mean that you like the video enough to stick around. I'm currently working on the next iteration of Blastwave, which should be done pretty soon. I have shown off the CAD design, so check that out if you want to see some more of my designs. If you're in the mood for something pretty different, I built myself a replica portal gun prop, so if you want to see what went into that, the link is in the description. Either way, thanks for watching, and keep designing.